Hello and welcome to a very creepy Halloween special of Life of Wolf Dog. It's Halloween. <coughs> and on Halloween we talk about fears and phobias and things that scare the living soul out of some people. One thing that some people fear is the wolf, especially black wolves lurking in the forest. They fear that they will be hunted down by these wolves and possibly eaten alive. So today, Camilla, our baby black faced wolf dog, takes us to Tuscany's most haunted castle, Castle Brolio, in order to address the topic of wolf dogs and whether they are actually dangerous. So tuck yourself up, turn off the lights, and enjoy our Halloween special. Welcome to Life of Wolf Dog. I'm a very bad wolf in disguise. At first I gave Grandma a surprise. When the little good girl did arrive, she saw my big teeth and my big eyes. I'm a very bad wolf, so hungry. I wanted that girl for my tea. When I saw the big man, he chased me. He got his ax and frightened me. Wolves have been feared throughout the years. Fairy tales of old and legends of werewolf monsters has got people believing that packs of wild wolves hunt down and kill people when they hike through the woods. So if people fear and loathe the poor wild wolf so much, is there any truth to these fears? And worse still, do the high content wolf dogs now so popular as pets fall into this category of presumed dangerous? Will we get attacked and hurt by the pet that sleeps on our hearth? Today, I'm back in Tuscany, meeting up with Camilla, our baby black phase wolf dog, and her human, Jessica. Camilla is now five months old and growing fast. Life of Wolf Dog follows Camilla's journey from a tiny puppy right up to a statuesque, beautiful black adult wolf dog with advice along the journey on the correct way to raise a wolf dog in order for less to end up being abandoned in rescues along the way. It's late at night and I'm checking into a creepy castle hotel, just a stone's throw from Tuscany's most haunted castle Brolio to where we will be filming. Okay, so guys, so welcome to probably one of the creepiest hotels we've been to so far. We are in Chianti Gaol at this old castle. And ironically, we're filming the Halloween special. This wasn't planned that we'd end up at a creepy hotel, but we just are. Even the bathroom door creaks when you go into it. Listen. Well, we've got a busy day tomorrow, so best that I get some well-needed rest. As long as I can sleep, that is. Will you join my wolf pack this Halloween? The hunt is on. As you know, I've teamed up with Wolf Game The Wild Kingdom, a brand new online game about the lives of wolves. Play as the young wolf king and as you complete tasks along the way, you finally earn the right to become the adult wolf king. The young wolf king's life and growth mirrors Camilla, our baby wolf, whose journey we are following in real life. Remember, you can help save and recruit Lupo too, our German shepherd character who appears alongside Camilla, our baby wolf. Well, this Halloween, it seems very appropriate that we should be taking a look at some of the more Halloween-esque heroes. Moon has a very Halloween-esque name, 
Fenrir looks just perfect to play on a dark Halloween night. Or Ghost, another great name for this time of year. You can register to play the game through the link that I will write in the description below. So will you join our wolf pack? Cal and I really hope you do. Happy Halloween. Good morning, Tuscany. Well, we spent the night in this beautiful castle. As you can see, it wasn't too creepy in the end. I fell asleep to the sound of the river, which is down here. Absolutely beautiful. It's 24 degrees today and we're off to film Kamala again. Well, the following morning looked a lot brighter and we had a very unusual morning planned out for us by Jessica. We were off to the elite of the elite of olive oil tasting. Yes, you heard me correctly first time. Olive oil tasting, not wine tasting. Kamala was loaded into the car as usual. Hopefully the sickness now improving a little. And we were off to Prunetti a brand new high-class olive oil tasting room in Griv, run by the Prunetti brothers, Gianni and Paolo. The Prunetti brothers, following in the footsteps of their grandfather, have learned to master every detail from the orchard to the extraction in their own mill. The latest generation machines allow for grinding with a minimum impact on oxidation in order to preserve the freshness of this smooth and fragrant gastronomic olive oil. Kamala greets owner Paolo. Ciao, come Hola, stai? Bene. Welcome. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Ciao. Ciao, Paolo Brunetti, Hi. nice to meet you. Welcome Very nice to meet Brunetti you. Brunetti Extra Gallery. Great. Nice so today you can taste something, good olive oil with a special something street food, something to eat and drink our special cocktail bar. So Lovely. oil inside a cocktail. Great, <laughs> sounds good. Well, fantastic, <laughs> oil inside a cocktail. I've never Come tried that perfect. in my life. So, so that will be something to see. <laughs> <laughs> and then we are seated. Kamala is a little wriggly, but it's another great experience for her in public. Lecino. Oil, medium oil, moraiolo 80%, frantoio monocultivar. It's the strongest. Different variety, different flavor, and different intensity. So, in our olive oil, you can find this one, flavor, but also you can find some very specific flavor in different olive in different varieties. We sample some unbelievable olive oil while Kamala does her best to get a bit of bread. Eventually both her and Lupo settle. Finally we get some olive oil cocktails and ice cream. Well, there's something you don't see every day. We bid adieu as there is something far more Halloween-esque beckoning to us. Castle Brolio and the ghost of the Iron Baron. Up in the hills stands a solid pentagon of walls of Lombard origin on an isolated hill in the municipality of Gaol in Chianti. The castle of Brolio was once run under the demanding heel of the Iron Baron, the great Italian politician, Bettino Riccasoli, who passionate about wines, never neglected the cure of his vineyards. And Riccasoli was in fact the inventor of the formula of Chianti Classico wine. He is in fact the most famous ghost in Tuscany. <laughs> Known by the nickname Iron Baron for his tough and uncompromising character, it is said 
that his spirit still walks the halls and grounds of Castello di Brolio. On the evening of the 23rd of October, 1880, the body of the barons was discovered after suffering a heart attack. His body was not immediately buried, awaiting permission from the prefect of Siena. Disturbing events were recorded on the day of his funeral, when odd gusts of wind blew open and closed the castle windows violently. And when transporting the casket, it seemed so heavy as if to be full of stones. Buried several times, the coffin was always found resurfaced the next day. So in order to rid the people of his evil spirit, the body of Barone Ricasoli was then buried in a ravine called Borro del Ancherona. From that moment began an endless series of sightings of the ghost of the Iron Baron. Sometimes it was seen clearing tables of objects with one fell swoop when he was in a bad mood, or returning to sleep in his bed, which was often found unmade, with a cigar stub next door, as if the ghost had granted a smoke before sleep. But his most famous appearances see him on horseback, wrapped in a black cloak, alongside a pack of hunting dogs, on a full moon night, passing through the walls of the castle. Finally, there are those who swear they have heard the trot of the Baron's horse resounding in the stone corridors, or sometimes hearing a mysterious flute echoing down the hallways. So of course, we were to take a look at Castle Brolio. It is Halloween after all. We drove up the dark wooded drive as the sun was setting. There was no one about. Once at the top, we got out to watch the sunset with the haunted castle towering over us in the background. Camilla happily meandered off leash around the vines and trees, her black wolf-like silhouette perfectly matching the creepy surroundings. We took a walk around the castle walls as the sun set on us, Camilla looking like a spectre. We even howled to the Iron Baron at the castle entrance. But on a more serious note, Halloween brings me to the topic of hatred and fear of the wolf. Often black wolves are used to depict evil beings and werewolf, half man, half wolf, is a monster that Hollywood has featured heavily, which in turn has made man fear the wolf more. This sadly has caused thousands of wolves to be culled around the world, all for the wrong reasons. For reasons that simply are not true in real life. So how about wolf dogs, especially high content wolf dogs, who have more confidence than a fearful wild wolf? Are they aggressive if raised incorrectly? And are people in danger of raising a dangerous animal if they do it wrong? Life of Wolf Dog is about raising wolf dogs the correct way in order to make sure less are handed into rescues around the world. So what did Jessica have to say about this? We need to be more scared of the Baron yeah, than, a than wolf. the wolf <laughs> and wolf dog. So when people say, why would you have a wolf dog? They're dangerous. Do they have any truth to that? The most important part, if you want to handle correctly a wolf dog, is made a right socialization for them. They can bite, they can be aggressive, they can make a lot of troubles to you without a correct socialization and imprinting and good behavior, good genes as well. So it's very, very important to train better as possible them. Otherwise, 
yeah, they can bite, they can have, they can create problems. Yeah. That's normal with all the dogs, actually. Yes, it's, it's but, with every single dog in the mm -hmm. world. It's not just a wolf dog thing, it's a canine thing. Mm -hmm. But the one thing that wolf dogs do have, well, a lot of domestic dogs don't have, is a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. Which is one of the main reasons why you mm -hmm. like to do your socialization so mm -hmm. well, getting to towns. Mm -hmm meeting people, mm -hmm. meeting other dogs. Mm -hmm. They can learn how to live with us perfectly. They can learn how to behave without being dangerous. So there's a lot of truth to be said about never cornering a wolf because a lot of the time they are so scared they will run away. The worst thing you could do is to corner one because then they have no way of escaping. They don't want confrontation, it's all mm -hmm. fear. Mm -hmm. Fear related, mm -hmm. isn't it? Fear biting. So they wouldn't really bite, just uh, if they really need. Mm -hmm. So you have to be respectful on their instinct, on their bigger instinct. One of the things a lot of people say when their wolf dogs are not as well socialized is they say to people, don't just grab my dog, don't just come up to it and without mm -hmm. asking me permission, grab mm -hmm. yeah. my dog. This is it's what a lot important. of people do. They force themselves onto wolf dogs. Yeah. It's more like us, you know. Yeah. We don't want really to have big contact with people that we really don't know. Yeah. We need, uh, you know, a presentation before. That's it for them, mm -hmm. especially with the American wolf dogs. What uh, I usually like to ask to people before they meet and touch my dogs is made a presentation, say hi to the dog mm -hmm. and be friendly, smile, they recognize that. Yeah. But let's talk about wolves. You don't need to fear a wild wolf, do you? No, for and sure. And why is that? <laughs> because we never see them, do we? <laughs> they don't come looking for people. No, it's, they don't, it's hard. They don't come looking to eat you. No, uh, they, are very, they will never. No, you will never see them. You will be really lucky and mm -hmm. I would love it if we mm -hmm. saw one. We're not going to see one. The hatred for the wild wolf out there is completely unprecedented. You have more to fear with a domesticated animal than you ever will with a wild wolf. As we were saying tonight, it's very important to work with your wolf dog in order to make sure it's never aggressive and it's never dangerous. And this is really, really important because again, that's another reason why they end up in shelters it's a mission for their life, you know, to preserve them and give to them the opportunity to live and spend a, a wonderful time with us. So it's very important to socialize them in a correct way and just uh, breed the best animals that can guarantee to you, you know, a little bit of luck. Yeah. That is actually a very important point which people tend to not talk about is genetics. So one of the biggest problems is people just breeding anything in order to make quick bit of money and unfortunately for getting the bad genes onto the streets often gives the dog or the wolf dog a bad name. Well, I think uh, <laughs> they are only for very special people. Yes. They are just for people that uh, really can understand their behavior and care about their training. And we're going to be basically going through the whole series of all the different things that you need to do with your wolf dog. If you choose to bring one of these amazing creatures into your life, we're watching Kamala as she grows from a little tiny puppy right up into an adult. And we're covering lots of different stages of that socialization um, process. So please go back, look over some of the previous episodes. We take her into towns. She gets used to lots of noises. We talk about lots of things that they go through. They destroy things, they can steal things, they can be very independent, they can be very stubborn. She will be a standing adult. <laughs> she will be absolutely beautiful and I can't wait to see her. In conclusion, people wrongly fear the wild wolf, a beautiful spirit who is too nervous for man to ever be lucky to glimpse her in the wild, let alone have one try and eat them. Ugly fairy tales and films have a lot to blame for this, as well as bad education in families raising their children to be fearful of wolves. As for wolf dogs, us humans have created an animal who has far less fear than a wolf. And with this comes great responsibility, as the danger to bite becomes higher with this confidence. We need to make sure that these sensitive and gentle beings are raised to have no fear and a great love for humans and other animals around them. There's no point not making episodes about them, as wolf dogs are here to stay. 
So with that in mind, better to have correct information out there than none at all. Socialization, love, understanding and guidance can help them become ambassadors to their kind. But not everyone can provide this. This Halloween, perhaps instead of fearing and demonizing wolves and wolf dogs, let's see them as what they truly are. Timid, gentle and very sensitive creatures with a huge heart and a lot of love to give. Instead, fear humans, especially the wolf hunters and the Iron Baron's ghost, who could be watching you right now. Salute! Happy Halloween. <laughs> And if you enjoyed this creepy Halloween episode of Life of Wolf Dog, then be sure to give us a big like and tune in every single week where we will be bringing you more amazing episodes of Animal Watch and following the story of our black wolf dog here, Kamala. Have a happy Halloween and stay safe. Goodbye. <laughs>